In this video, I'll show you how to use the new grammar section in Logos' exegetical guide to quickly sort through these reference works and discover unique grammatical features in the text you're studying. Imagine you're studying Philippians 2.25, where Paul writes about his brother and fellow worker Epaphroditus, and you want to explore the various original language features of this passage. Simply right-click on the verse, select Philippians 2.25 from the context menu, and create an exegetical guide. The exegetical guide gathers information about this specific passage relating to textual variants, grammatical discussions, grammatical constructions, visualizations of the passage, and a word-by-word -word analysis of the text. In the grammar section of the guide, Logos calls from all the grammars in your library, searching for every time they reference Philippians 2.25. Then it breaks down those results and categorizes them according to subject matter. For instance, when I hover over prolegomena, Logos tells me that references in this section are found in the introductory material of the grammar. I can open this section by clicking on the drop-down arrow. From there, I'll open Blass's Grammar of New Testament Greek, where he discusses the relationship between Epaphras and Epaphroditus. I'm told that these two names do not refer to the same person, but undoubtedly one name is an abbreviation of the other. If I want to explore where a Greek grammar discusses features of the passage that relate to discourse grammar or discourse analysis, I can also expand that search. When I click on section 30 in Weiner's A Treatise of New Testament Greek, I find that the genitive will come before its governing noun either when it belongs equally to two nouns or when it is emphatic. In Philippians 2.25, Paul uses emphasis to stress the shift from my fellow soldier to your messenger. Previously, he described Epaphroditus as my brother, my fellow worker, and my fellow soldier. But then he starts to talk about Epaphroditus' relationship to the Philippians. He is your messenger and minister to my need. Paul uses this genitive construction in order to signal to his readers a shift from Epaphroditus' relationship to himself to Epaphroditus' relationship to the Philippians. He is not only Paul's brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, he is also the Philippians' messenger and minister to Paul. We could also explore discussions about the various morphological, syntactical, and stylistic features that relate to this passage in the same way. To get started using the grammar section of the exegetical guide, subscribe today.